Hello everyone. Some old man back in front of the computer. Today is June 11th, 2021. And today I'd like to talk about why we prep. Now, there are a lot of things going on in the world right now. I'm sure anybody who watches the news knows that. But Let's go ahead and list the potential SHTF events that could happen. Well, first of all, there's the normal things that anybody should be preparing for. Depending on where you live, the time of year, you might experience hurricanes in your area. That's one thing. If you're in a drier area, you might get tornadoes if you're in the Midwest. Blizzards, ice storms, depending on how far north you are. Maybe you get flooding. Drought is a big one in this time, especially out in the western part of the United States. Forest fires comes with the drought. If you're on the west coast, earthquakes are definitely some of the things. But not everything is weather or related to the climate or the earth. Economic disasters. If you get a job loss, if you lose your job, that's a disaster to you. It may not be to everybody that you know, but to you it's a disaster. And with unemployment rates potentially going out the roof, who knows? Now, we just finished, we're coming out of a pandemic. I truthfully don't think that pandemic is really over yet, but look what it did to our economy. Because of all the money that the government is printing and pumping into the economy, we're going to see more and more inflation. I don't know if we will get as bad as it was back in the 70s, but it could. It could get as bad as what they experienced down in places like Venezuela or Weimar Germany where the inflation was so bad that you could run around with a wheelbarrow full of million dollar bills and not be able to afford a loaf of bread. It could happen here too. Sneer if you like, but it could. Many of us over more than a couple decades old have experienced an, a recession but how many of us are old enough to have experienced the Great Depression back in the 1920s I'm afraid that we're about due for something that will make that Great Depression look like a picnic with inflation combined with it so that's a good reason to prepare. Now, let's talk about infrastructure. Have you been watching the news lately? How about some of these terrorist type hacker attacks against various things? First, it was the Colonial Pipeline. Look what happened to gasoline. For just a, in almost no time, it became more expensive. Not that it was getting, wasn't getting that way anyway, but if you look at all sorts of things that are getting hacked now that beef company destroyed beef production for what was it a third of the a meat producer that provided a third of the beef to the United States that's a big hit and there are things that could still get hit what happens if those hackers or someone, if they are state-sponsored by the Russians or someone else, decided to go after our electrical grid. Think what would happen if all power went out for a week, a month, forever. I don't think it'll get that bad, but it could. Part of the reason that all these things like that happen is because of the internet internet is so tightly ingrained with our economy and 
everything right now that it can't be shut off. It's part of our society now. But it makes everything else more accessible. And our electrical grid especially was already fairly fragile. If things become not available, whether it be electricity, food, other materials, what would you do? Let's talk about society in general. Anybody who's been watching the news for the last year has come to realize that things like riots just happen. Certain cities are experiencing a lot more than others, but it happens. Are you prepared for the consequences of something like that? Our entire economy could collapse because you know, if things go bad on the pandemic and we're locked down again, look how many businesses closed already. How many more will close if everybody's having to stay at home. I know a lot of us have adjusted to working from home, but not everyone can. And everything is tied together so that if certain people have not been able to work, they can't pay their mortgages. And guess what? There's a mortgage thing that people can't be kicked out for being a renter or mortgage who have not been able to pay. But pretty soon, that's going to go bye-bye. And when it does, you think that the owners of those properties are going to say, well, you can stay anyway. Mm -mm. They want their money. And if they don't get it, they will take other means. Whether that's someone who owns a uh, a apartment complex, someone who owns a row of houses, or if it's the bank talking to the owner of the house, if they don't get paid, they'll take the property. I'm afraid that's coming here in the next few months. And all of it together can cause problems with the entire economy. I'm afraid it may come to that. And has anybody been paying attention to the politics in this country for the last 10 years, 12 years? It has become more and more hyper-partisan every election. It used to be, yeah, the Democrats and the Republicans didn't really like each other's policies, but they'd work together no matter who was in the office. But I think that started going downhill in the late 90s, early 2000s. And the last few presidents we've had, the other side basically would not put up with them. Well, I don't know how much further that can go before we actually end up with a real civil war. Now, that is not all the things that could happen. You could have some really over-the-top things happen. War? We could have a war. Wars are always good for the economy. They build up and keep things going and allow us to pump money into the economy. Governments like war. Well, we could have an invasion from one of the other countries, or you know, who knows? We could have some rogue nation throwing nukes at us, not to bomb cities, but throw them up where it'll blow up and cause an EMP, electromagnetic pulse. That would pretty much kick the uh, our electrical grid to the curb put it down for unknown amount of time because some of those things are really sensitive to things like electromagnetic pulse and if it takes the grid down that could be followed up by a invasion 
And we don't even have to talk about invasion or EMP to talk about war. We're doing fifth generation stuff, terror attacks, i.e. those hacker attacks maybe. Those could be uh, a war of sorts. It's not so over the top because it's happening. Other over the top things that could happen. Earthquakes. I mentioned earthquakes before. If you watch the news, there have been a lot of earthquakes in places that are subject to things like that and places that don't get them as often. But there have been a lot of little ones. There have been a few that have been fairly moderate. But there could be a big one. And we're talking really big. We could talk San Andreas. We could talk even bigger. We could talk Cascadia. If you'd like to see Seattle gone? That would do it. How about Yellowstone supervolcano? I don't think it's going to go off, but it could. Of course, if that one goes off, we may all be in world hurt. I don't think you can prep for that. How about the sun? We could have a CME, coronal mass ejection, and they are actually seeing those happen right now even though we're in a solar minimum. There are sunspots and there are CMEs. Fortunately, there haven't been any directly pointed at Earth yet that are strong enough to really affect things yet. But you know, one other thing that is going on right now, and if you just read the news, you will see it. We're having the early stages, we think, of a magnetic pole reversal where the north and south poles flip so that in a couple three hundred years maybe a thousand the north pole will be south on our compass and the north will be down at the south pole geologically the earth isn't going to flip over but the direction of the magnet that is is earth will interesting topic and I don't know how soon it will happen if but it will happen because they've got a historical record that it happens periodically anyway but the thing is is that as as we move toward this event which it will happen eventually the magnet protecting uh, the magnetic fields protecting us from the Sun's radiation from cosmic radiation is getting weaker it's not gone, not by any means, but it is a lot weaker than it was even a hundred years ago. And because of that weakness, it wouldn't take as much of a CME to totally fry the electrical grid. You notice how I keep coming back to things like affecting the electrical grid which affects this we're having a super big drought now which is really impacting farms out in the west and midwest which impacts food production you go ahead and look at the news there are video there's video of farmers just basically plowing under parts of their fields just because there's not enough irrigation water to irrigate everything there might not be enough to irrigate anything if it keeps getting worse. What does this all come down to? Things are going to happen. I expect it. I think you should too. And what I would encourage you to do is make some sort of preparations. You do not have to be 100% prepared for everything because it can't be done. Some of the things I mentioned will basically kill 99% or more of the human population. You can't prepare a bit. But you should be able to prepare for at least the basics. I hope that if you're in a hurricane or, or a flood or something, whatever your area is subject to, an earthquake, whatever, it knocks out the power in your region. For a week can you survive for that week without help 
if you can if you've got enough extra supplies that you can not only keep yourself alive but maybe help your neighbor your friends you won't be in a whole world of hurt if you don't and you're waiting on someone else who did prepare or for the government who may or may not come depending on how widespread the disaster is. Go ahead and take the time to make the preparations. Stock the extra food. Keep extra water stored or a means to purify water. Go ahead and keep other preparedness items. Keep your flashlights, candles, things like that. If you have the means, set up with a generator or solar panels or something so you have a backup. I've talked about in previous videos how I have a lot of preps. Not as many as I'd like because I don't have that much. I do have a backup generator. It's not a big one, but it'll keep me a little bit in electricity, hopefully long enough to weather anything happening. I have enough food, so if the supply chain, if the farms shut down and prices go out the roof and there's not as much food available, I've got something to fall back on. So that if there's only a little bit available, I can supplement it. All these things could happen. I don't expect all of them to them, but something will happen. Maybe not something big, but something will happen that's going to be an SHTF. I hope that you're ready, because I'm going to stay ready. Oh, and my t-shirt? That's part of preparedness. If you have lots of goodies, Somebody's going to find out, and if you can't protect yourself, they'll help themselves. So figure that into your preparedness, if you can. This is some old man encouraging you to prepare, and if you like my video, go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit that little bell icon so you'll get reminders of future videos. This is some old man signing off.